we're going to talk sewage now and this new campaign against wet wipes, which caused all these fat burgers, Daisy and, and uh, you. Um, uh, the, the, he said fat I'm... burgers and looked at us. How rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Andrew as well is here. Uh, to, to join in. Yeah, water <laughs> companies dump sewage onto England's top beaches more than 1,500 times last year. That's according to new research uh, conducted by the Liberal Democrats, or they got the people involved to look into it. And we're joined by environmental campaigner and musician Fergal Sharkey, who's been campaigning tirelessly to protect Britain's waters. I mean, this is something that you've been very cross about, Thanks. frustrated about, angry about mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Um, is there any comfort in the new statement saying they are going to ban wet wipes, the majority of which have plastic in, and that bungs up the pipes, which causes more problems for the yep. companies in disposing sewage, that they want to crack down on this dumping? Is there any comfort in that for you? Uh, I, I'm afraid government's whole statement is incredibly muddled and confused, and I think that's on their part. For example, the wet wipes announcement, this is the third time they've mm. made that I've not heard it before. The same the last five years. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were going to do it, you would have done it five years ago. Uh, yeah. When it comes to the unlimited fines, which they're talking about, mm. before Christmas, that was a maximum of 250 million. In January, the chairman of the Environment Agency referred to that as crazy. I was in the room when he said it. The Secretary of State in February said it was well, disproportionate. Well, crazily too much. Crazily too much. Mm. Uh, in February, the Secretary of State said it was disproportionate. And here we are, a matter of weeks later, we've gone from £250 million being crazy and disproportionate mm. to unlimited. But when you look back at it, the regulator off what, for 30 years, has had the power to fine water companies up to 10% of their turnover right. per year. Yeah. for breaching the regulations. So why don't Have they ever done it? Once in 30 years. Mm. When why, was that? Why do you think that is? Uh, it's, well, it's a, for me, it's a combination of things. One is political indifference and political decisions about the price of water and the regulators quite simply not having the wherewithal, the ability or the desire or ambition. They've known about this problem for decades. Mm. Just to remind everybody, the UK government was taken to court by the European Commission in 2012 and found guilty of breaking the regulations. Mm. So they've known about this for a very long time. So why is it I mean, so, why is like a UK problem? Why is it our problem? We don't seem to read about this happening in countries like uh, France. Because everybody else it? simply got on top of it uh, by way of example, and I'm, this is off the top of my head, so I might be slightly wrong. In France, I think there are something like 1,600 stretches of river designated as bathing water quality. Mm. And those rivers are tested, treated, looked after well. Here in the UK, we have... Two, <laughs> because our rivers suffer from the same pro problem as our beaches. Yeah. And those beaches that you discussed this morning, 1,500 pollution events on blue flag beaches. Mm. So give us an idea, pollution event, that's one of those great euphemisms, <laughs> isn't it? We're talking about, well, everybody knows what we're talking about, sewage being pumped into places where we want to go on yeah. holiday and our children bathe. Yeah. And that could be the beaches, could be rivers. Yeah. It, it's a ghastly thing. How is it even legal for it, water companies to do it at all uh, in 2023? Uh, well, it, it, it's not. According to the European Court of Justice, this court case in 2000. But our law says that there are some circumstances where it, it's allowed. Like when it rains heavily. Uh, uh, well, actually, curiously enough, the government did try to make that argument to the court ten years ago, and the court right. said no. Mm. What the court <laughs> said was that it's only allowable in exceptional situations. Now, those, from what I understand of it, are situations incredibly rare, incredibly unique, that you couldn't have foreseen and you couldn't have really planned Are we talking for. about very, very, very heavy rainfall? Correct. Yeah. Flooding. And yeah. think exactly that Noah's Ark coming down the middle of Oxford <laughs> Street collecting animals two by two. Okay. As we now know, water companies last year, the better part of two million hours. Well, it didn't rain last year. We were in a drought. There was hose pipe bands. All right. So it didn't even rain. So what do we do? It. So what do we need to build? It's clearly a problem with infrastructure because if when it rains heavily, they have no alternative but to shove this stuff into the rivers because there's nowhere else to put it. What do we do? What do we build? Uh, well, there's two things that need to happen. One is actually for government to go and enforce the law, which has been on statute for 30 years. All the powers are there. Yeah, that's a legal... That's, a, that's the is. legal argument. And What's the, the practical solution? The, the practical solution is government now needs to display leadership instead of all these completely crazy, nonsensical policies it's announcing today, it needs to sit down with the industry, everybody concerned, 
develop a proper plan and strategy. We know it's going to take 10 or 15 years, mm. but a plan and strategy that is properly costed, that is implemented, that is properly pro project managed, and that people are held accountable so for it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a what do you need conversation, isn't it? Why is it possible, no. you know, when people throw up camps for refugees, yeah. you know, the UN can get in and, and find a situation in the middle of a desert yeah. to, to deal with sewage. Why is it not possible over that 30 years for there not to be some sort of temporary structure? We understand that big infrastructure in a Victorian system costs billions, but why can there not be some temporary overflow? Uh, Am I being daft? No, no, you're not, you're not being daft. There has been a colossal failure of regulation and oversight yeah. of this industry for 30 years. Again, just to remind everybody, According to the regulator, we have paid the water companies all of the money they needed for 30 years to fix this problem. Mm. Well, they yeah. clearly haven't spent it on the sewage system. The question Should... becomes, what happened to money? Fergal, you put a very good case. So let's put the case for the government. The Department for the Environment and Rural Affairs has said they will be launching oh. a consultation on increased penalties for polluters, including fines of up to <laughs> 250 million, which you said they said was not... Another consultation. ..not commensurate Another with consultation. the appropriate fine. <laughs> Quick word from you two. Do we just throw our hands up in no. the air? Can the government do anything? Well, if they can... Should if they If they be? can impose unlimited fines, they should. And I would also go for the directors of these wretched companies. Take their dividends, their fat cap fees off them. They'd quickly move, get their act, change their act quickly well, if it hurts them in the that. pocket. If well, if they can't, companies? if they can't, change the law because they are affecting public health. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, I've got friends, you know, friends who've got into all this cold water swimming and all that, who've yeah. been really ill more than. Mm. You know, but I've got a handful of friends who've been really sick from from swimming in rivers yeah. and lakes. And I wanted to ask Fergal about off what the regulator because yeah. everybody you know, says they're not doing their job, but I have heard people say that the, the way it's set up, it's almost like they've got their hands tied behind their back and, and, the, and the way that they're structured needs to be changed. Is um, that, is well that I, right? Uh, well, I, I, I don't share that view. Uh, for example, holding directors to account, it's a licensing condition of every water company's licence that they have to make sure they leave enough money oh. to do the job that they're asked to do by the regulator and not to pay out bonuses, not to pay out dividends. Well, here's the thing, off what? That's been a licensing condition for 30 years. Why okay, didn't you guys. enforce it? We're out of time, but listen, more power to your elbow. Mm. Um, I just, I mean, I know you've been a tireless campaigner for decades now, <laughs> and I just find it extraordinary that we haven't made more progress. As yeah. you keep saying, we're just going round and round and round and round, having the same conversation over and over and over again. Correct. Like an unhappily married couple. You can't make a decision. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Fergal. Good Thank to see you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good to talk to you too as well. See you see tomorrow. You again. Nicer than Kevin, isn't she? I'm going to say that every day. <laughs> I can say that every day. And better looking. She's blonder. And better She's looking. <laughs> <laughs> listen, so we've, already, we've already touched on it.